good afternoon we're here in the British Lounge which is right on Main Street um, in the centre of Park City at the Sundance Film Festival and we're here to talk about Saturday um, the film the short film and I'm um, Great to be joined by Jessica Lever, who's the producer of Saturday. I'm also here with Sheila Coleman, who is a spokesperson for the Hillsborough Justice Campaign, and Wayne Scholes, who is the executive producer on the film. Um, so thanks for joining me, first of all. Um, it's it. great to be here. Um, can I just ask you, uh, first of all, Jessica, how you became to involved in the film? Obviously, it was written by Mike Forshaw. Um, and then did he approach you once he had the script? Uh, yes, exactly. So um, Mike contacted me. He did um, a script development workshop called the um, European Script Pitch through a company called Nisi Massa. Um, and he won a Best Pitch Award there. Um, through that, he got in contact with a director of photography that I've worked with quite a lot called Brian Fawcett um, and was asking for recommendations of producers and Brian said that he should get in contact with me and um, so Mike sent me along the script and really it was because of the introduction from Brian that I agreed to meet up because I'd sworn never to do any more short films and um, I kind of want to concentrate on on feature um, filmmaking uh, at this point and um, I read the script and I really really liked it I sort of fell in love with it and um, I think that uh, often my job is to sort of work on the script and kind of improve it and this is one of the few films that few scripts that I've ever read that I've just sort of said yeah that's kind of what we're going to make I think so um so yeah so basically I agreed to, I agreed to do it uh, as my last ever short so, film so the script that was presented to you is is, is almost word to word what, what we, we see now yeah yeah almost exactly like even down to the shots of the um the iron in the bucket filling up with water those those things wow. were in the script they weren't something that evolved on on set at all so what is it you, that you concentrated on in terms of making this film happen? What was your role in terms of you know, pushing it forward and, and it becoming the finished product we see? Well, the first thing that I thought was really important was that we were talking to the various groups in Liverpool, um, the families and the family justice campaign and all that kind of stuff, which is how come we, um, at the point that we approached Sheila. Yeah. Um, and... Um, then also we were talking about the best way to raise the money to make the film and it just felt something that would really suit Kickstarter. Um, Kickstarter being something that's about building a community around a film as well as raising money. Um, it's also about sort of spreading the word and getting people on board to make a film all together and it seemed to really lend itself to that. So that was something that we discussed early on was that that way we'd definitely be making a film that spoke to the people that we were making the film for and about as well. How pleased were you, Sheila, when they approached you, and how important do you think it is that you know that people who are looking to tell stories around Hillsborough, um, you know, are, are respectful of people who are, who are right there, uh, you know, directly involved? Yeah, over the years being involved in the Hillsborough Justice Campaign, um, there were times where we longed for people to get in touch with us, but nobody was interested. Um, and then towards sort of the, the latter years um, of the campaign to date, um, people would get in touch, and um, a lot of the time. Uh, it was almost demanding they had a right to kind of like take people's experiences put them on film and I, a lot of that you know i felt was quite exploitative there have also been films made where they people haven't even bothered to contact anyone mike the thing i liked about this was that mike's sensitive approach mike um contacted me and asked could we meet and although he's based in london he's from liverpool but i always seemed to be in london when he was in liverpool and i think we crossed somewhere a crew but eventually we met at euston station and um right from the beginning um Mike went into the detail around why he wanted to do the film, his own experience of being an eight-year-old boy at the time, and just right away, I think just the experience I've gained over the years from being involved, I saw that he was very sensitive about it, and um, he was, you know, he was seeking approval, because the, and that's what I liked, he was sensitive enough to know not to go forward if people didn't want him to. And I know that in terms of, and he mentioned Kickstarter. And so I like that idea because it was the thing of, you know, he was going to have to earn, he was going to have to really go out and sell this to make the money to, to get it put on. And I like that because that, again, showed some commitment. And for me personally, the actual idea that, and the thing he had written resonated with me as someone from Liverpool, as someone who was in Liverpool on the day of the disaster. And that feeling of um, not knowing and for that 
you know, period, you know, that stood still. There was a time when we were as one. Um, we were all the same. We all knew someone there, had family who were there. And then the differences, you know, emerged over the hours where people re received the worst news and others didn't. And Mike had that, and I thought, and it was just a snapshot of it, but I thought, no, this guy's sensitive. And so I had no problem whatsoever going back to the Hills for Justice campaign and actually saying, no, this... this this will be sensitive. And um, I was happy to endorse it in terms of writing a brief piece for the Kickstarter campaign. But I like the idea of Kickstarter because it, it's, as Jessica said, it's, it's involving the community that was most involved. It's not um, exploiting, taking the experience. And over the years, you know, I've always grappled with the ethical dilemma of actually writing anything because it wasn't my lived experience, I wasn't there. And I've kind of rationalized it because I felt I was doing it on the basis of moving forward in terms of, um, you know, sort of gaining justice for those who died. But I've had that, but along the, not everyone's that sensitive and along the years, people have felt, hey, you know, can I have your story? Right across and sometimes from areas quite local where you've gone oh this is just so insensitive and we've never supported that and would never encourage families or survivors to speak with those people but I had no doubt what uh, you know no qualms whatsoever about supporting the venture once I'd spoken to Mike because he's genuine through and through. That's great and how about you Wayne now when did you get involved and, and why did it why did you decide it was something you wanted to support? It was actually staff um, so for us you know we've got an office in um, Liverpool when we located into Europe, you know, Liverpool is, is a connection for my family, it's where my family are from. And um, so we opened an office there and uh, three staff called me on the same day and said, hey, have you seen this thing on Kickstarter? And so, you know, it, we'd heard of it through other people. You know, what, uh, some of the guys at the Anfield Rapid mentioned it to us. Um, and then when the staff started talking about it, they all said, well, we've already signed in. So, you know, can we get the company into it? And so um, we reached out to Mike and Jessica and had just... I mean, it's funny you talk about the comfort level. It, it was a, a completely different um, comfort level. The conversation was just very easy. It wasn't, um, it wasn't a difficult conversation to have, even though the topic is extremely difficult and extremely sensitive. And particularly if you have, you know, if you're either from Liverpool or have connections to Liverpool. And if you're a Liverpool fan in general, I mean, I think, you know, the, the great thing about being a Liverpool fan is that it is. I mean, it sounds like such a cliche to say it's a family, but it really is, and you, you sort of feel connected to everybody. And the fact that um, that we're able to participate in it as as a fan, as well as someone who appreciates good um, good content and, and good filmmaking, it made it a really easy conversation. And as soon as we saw the script, it wasn't even really a question. I mean, I think honestly, Jessica, I might be wrong, but I think it was like two days. Mm. I don't. I mean, it was like it was a. It was a nerve-wracking two days. <laughs> we, so we had two the, days could be a long time. We had the meeting with Wayne, and I think he said that he was going to read the script on the flight back that evening, but somehow you got delayed and you didn't read That's it until right. the following night. So me and Mike hadn't heard anything by the next morning. We were really worried. That's right. Uh, so um, so yeah. So as the person from London in all of this, like every time I've been kind of reaching out and seeking sort of endorsement from people from Liverpool and. And the, the, so it was really important to us. You know, we had the backing of the Hillsborough Justice campaign, but at this point, it's like, you know, this guy's like a massive Liverpool fan. His company's called Red Touch Media. Um, uh, it, it, just everything about it no, is I like... I felt a little bit guilty because I didn't realise. <laughs> well, it was, it, it's just that thing where you sort of get yourself into a, a, a mad state for no reason, actually. And in actual fact, then he, it was just absolutely fine. And, yeah. and, and he was really on board with it and said it, it was really powerful and really great piece of work. And at, at that early stage, a script is very um, a very shy thing like you haven't shown it to a lot of people you know like uh, Mike, yeah. Mike had won this award for best pitch but that's quite a lot based on his emotion when he's telling the story and I don't think everybody's necessarily read the script at that point when he won the award so at this point not very many people had read the script so at this it really was sort of um, it's exposing yourself quite a lot to send it out uh, obviously less so for me I didn't write it but uh, you sort of feel every every person who sets eyes on it, you're kind of sitting and hoping that the feedback's going to be good. And in this case, yeah, it was it was sort of a uh, fairy godmother sort of moment or fairy godfather. <laughs> <laughs> well, but but I mean, it, it sounds like it was simple, and it really was in that sense for the decision making process because the script. You know, you mentioned that when the script came to you, it was finished. Yeah. It, for us, it was. It, you know, we read scripts all day long, and to get a script that was actually ready. And it was actually finished. I, I could believe when Mike and Jessica said, 
well, actually, we're going to start shooting now. I mean, it's now. We have to get this done. And there was such a passion behind it that it made it really easy to make a quick decision because they were so fast. And then to know that the production was so well planned. Uh, Jessica's got... Um, I, I mean, look, I, Jessica probably won't toot her own horn, but um, she has a, a lot of experience. And that made it very easy for us as well because you want a good producer behind a project yeah, that you're sure. going to back. You have to have the right producer. And um, she was clearly more than capable of handling it. I think also as well the important thing is um, because of that, as you say, that, 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 that passion for it which everybody had and because there was, I think, the, there was this commitment and this genuine commitment, there was no other agenda and because, you know, I mean, you know, Wayne's a businessman, I'm very protective of anything to do with Hillsborough and so the thing was everyone was just united in it because of no other agenda. No one had an alternative agenda. There were no subplots with this. And everyone was heading in the same direction. And I think that's why we have this finished product. Great. Well, it feels like a really good time to show the trailer um, before we get into a bit more about the casting and things like that. So, uh, yeah, we'll be with you, back with you after that. Back, it's still John Gibbons from the Anfield Rap, um, Jessica, who's the producer, um, Sheila from the HJC, and uh, Wayne Skull's fairy godmother, <laughs> <laughs> which I like and I'm going to keep using. Um, I want to talk about the casting, first of all. Um, I think you did a phenomenal job on that, so I just want to talk about the process of getting people involved. Uh, the first people, person I want to talk about is Neil Fitzmaurice, um, who we know he's been on the Anfield Rap with us. Um, how pleased were you to get Neil? Um, based on the fact that he was at Hillsborough, and um, he's spoken about being at Hillsborough, and the, you know, the, the fact that obviously, I mean, he puts in a phenomenal performance as well. So how pleased were you to get Neil on board? Oh, beside ourselves, happy. Um, yeah, Mike sent me a link to him talking on YouTube and said, this is the guy that I want to play the dad. Um, and like I was saying before, in terms of the various endorsements of people reading the script and getting involved at the point that we sent the script to him again it was incredibly nerve-wracking because obviously knowing his background <coughs> it could have been very easy for him to say no yeah. just this and honestly I think if he'd have said no he didn't want to do it for any reason um other than he just was too busy I think I'd have had to follow up with him and check that it wasn't something that he had an objection to the project in and of itself because of the subject matter because for us, it was super important to us that he felt that we were representing the subject well. Um, so I'd say, I just, so I just, yes, well, yeah, I just think that um, knowing Neil and knowing, you know, sort of his his range of acting skills from comedy to very serious things, but also what you know, very quietly over the years, well, I know his passion as a Hillsborough survivor, and I think that um, if. Neil had said no for the same reasons that Jessica has just outlined. I'd have thought, I've got this wrong. And I'd have been very surprised if I'd, I'd, I'd read everything wrong. And I think the fact that, you know, Neil, you know, and we know that he was prepared to dislike it when he read it, and then he was just, you know, sort of sold on it. And I think he just then added to this confidence which has led to this finished product and i think he gives an amazing performance in which you see that gamut from this jove you know that, that the whole range of like um his his abilities from this jovial father you know kind of laughing and joking to that raw emotion at the end and i think you know in, in, to do that within a snapshot but i think that i personally and, and knowing him well i i'm so pleased he is in it because i think it further endorses that this is about liverpool and the passion and the honesty and the genuine commitment of, of everyone involved in this. Yeah, I mean, it's a phenomenal performance. And like you say, 
I mean, in England, we probably know him better as a comedian. You know, he's in shows like Phoenix Nights, you know, which is wild, wildly popular. But, you know, he goes through, as Sheila says, a whole range of emotions from being that jovial guy we maybe know to the end, you know, and it's so powerful. So, you know, it is a phenomenal performance. Definitely. And I think that it's one of those things that I think in good filmmaking, and I can say this is the producer because I'm slightly removed from it, but it's almost indistinguishable where it comes from the script and where it comes from the actor. That's the part that I find really fascinating. Like it's so coming from him, and I know that was written down on paper as well. So what Mike did really brilliantly was construct a character that managed to have an arc within a 15-minute piece of filmmaking, which I think is the the most exciting thing about it, the point where he's so upset at the end and he doesn't comfort his son, he's the one of the parents that you would think would comfort his son, um, uh, is so powerful that I think that that's, that's where the script writing and the performance together really merge together. You can't tell one from the other almost. It's so believable, him as a character. See, I think that's one of the really interesting parts for me is that we're talking about... I mean, the way you've described that... We're talking about a feature-length film. Yeah. The fact that the fact that they were able to put this into a 15-minute short to go from showing what what was all our Saturdays. I mean, it was that's what we did on Saturdays. It was the pub. It was football. You hung out with your dad. You, I mean, your brothers. I mean, you, it was a family thing. And then to be able to put that range of emotion into 15 minutes, whilst encapsulating the pain and and the distress and the and the the, the unknowns of a disaster and a tragedy like Hillsborough, it's, it's not an impossible, and yet, somehow, as filmmakers, they've managed to put that in whilst remaining true to the story, true to the truth, and, and being able to, um, to do it so that everybody that's, that's been involved you know, with Hillsborough is able to actually see it and feel it and understand that this was done for the right reasons and, and tells the story the right way. It, it, it's astonishing that they're able to do it in 15 minutes. Yeah, it's a real testament, as you say, both to the writers and the people playing yeah. the parts. Um, another person who got involved was Elizabeth Barrington. Yeah. She plays the mother. Um, it, it, she's great. I mean, she reminds me of every Scouse mother I've ever met. I, I can't tell you how many times I've been told to keep off the curtains. I know. Get off the curtains. <laughs> I yeah, love that line. Yeah. I know. Where we used to yeah, just set up football goals in the front room. Um, no, yeah. she's great. I mean, tell us, tell us a little bit more about Elizabeth as, a, as an actress and, and how you got her involved. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, we um, we knew of her work, we um, saw her picture, we knew that she suited exactly the character that um, Mike had written, so we reached out to her agent. Um, Lizzie's done things from, she's been on TV um, more times than uh, I can count almost, she's like a regular on Waterloo Road, on ITV, she's in Stella and Sky, um, she's been in Doctor Who, she's done loads of feature films as well, so she was in Quills, um, she was in In Bruges with... Uh, Colin Farrell um, she's been in uh, various Mike Lee films she's in Mr Turner and um, uh, and other films um, that he's done in Nanny McPhee she's been in so many things she's amazing mm. uh, and so we kind of did that thing that you do sometimes when you're casting people which you just call their agent and hope um, yeah. and sort of assume they're probably going to say no and that they're too busy but she gave up a weekend in, in the middle of filming a TV series I think we had to um, travel her from I can't remember where she came from, but she came just for the weekend to do her scenes um, and, yeah, gave up her time so that she could be with us and make the film, which was, again, the sort of brilliant endorsement of the film. And we absolutely love her. thought she was brilliant. She got it the same thing. She, <laughs> she, she's originally from Liverpool and got it very well from, yeah, like right from the first moment. But she's another one, Wayne, who... who what, like what you talked about with Neil, who manages to cram so much into into a short film, you know, she comes across as the kind of, you know, the mother that everyone remembers as a, as a youngster, and then goes through, you know, the, the stages from, from her worry to then her, uh, you know, almost almost breakdown of emotions, you know, and to, to, to cram all that into, you know, to 10, 15 minutes, you know, which is not even, you know, on every scene, you know, is, is, is a phenomenal achievement. Well, and again, I think it's this ability in the film to be able to relate to every single character instantly. I mean, I can remember my mom yelling at me because she just waxed the step. And <laughs> I, get off my steps, and I mean, get off the curtains, whatever line she said, I could relate to it instantly. And I think that's, that's the beauty of, of this film is that you can powerfully connect to the tragedy because you can relate to the characters that are in it because they are us. Yeah. They are all of us. We've all been to football matches. We've all had a mom say things like that to us. And 
I mean, and, and it's the, the small images as well. I think one of the things that I really enjoyed about the film was the subtle images, the Domestos, the, like, the, the metal bucket, things like that that just... That is how we grew up. And I think that's why we're able to connect to this so powerfully. I think so those, those images, uh, for me, really located it, you know, into the 80s, into the late 80s. Um, the, the, the tin mop bucket, as opposed to ones that people yeah. use now, that was very powerful. And, you know, um, j just the whole, you know, the, the house and the furniture, etc. I think it did take you back. So you were immediately, you immediately knew this wasn't present day. And, you know, th that was very important to understand that. And that was very cleverly done, I thought. And I think that's, that's one of the, I guess, skills you guys have as filmmakers is because you, because Hillsborough is such a powerful story and you want people, even if they don't know too much about the disaster to, to, to connect with, with, with the story. And I guess the way you get people to connect with the story is through the characters. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's why they do such a great job. As, as Wayne says, almost instantly that you like these people up straight away. Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's that thing of it's all the roles in the film. Like all of those mm. small details come directly from our production designer. So our amazing production designer, Anna Lavelle, did all of that being, I can't remember her age, but she definitely um, is. <laughs> she, yeah, she, she, was, she was a young person. Uh, she was definitely sort of, you know, prob probably pre-teen in 1989. So the fact that she managed to get all those details, like, uh, so right, it just goes to show like, her training and how brilliant she is. Like, it's so important to have all of those different people <laughs> taking their roles seriously on a film. Well, yeah, no, she does a phenomenal job. Um, Lastly, but, but certainly not least, the young Harrison, who's, who's in many ways the star and then steals the show. I mean, where on earth did you find him? What a, what a little superstar. Absolutely amazing, yeah. So um, there is a casting agency in um, uh, Liverpool called The All Stars Casting, uh, run by a lady called S Sylvie. Sylvia. Yeah, do you know Sylvie? And Sylvie, Sylvia Gatrell. And uh, Mike contacted her knowing that she had had children on her books and um, she runs workshops I think it's twice a week and Mike went along to go and see the workshops to go and see the the child actors actually working so it wasn't a formal interview situation um, and after the first workshop he went to he called me and said I found him and I was like I don't know like I think you should go to at least another couple of workshops because <laughs> you know you don't you don't know for sure until you've had a chance to compare you know the this kid to everybody else that you see and he's like I'm pretty certain but yeah all right definitely definitely and he says that the thing that he loved the most about Harrison was that he was quite quiet he was just very quiet in in the background sort of watching trying to work out what he should be doing whereas um, maybe some of the other kids were a little bit more kind of show off thing showing off trying to sort of get Mike's attention and so on and um the thing that he loved about Harrison was his sort of watchfulness and um yeah basically he went back to a couple more um casting sessions like to these workshops and uh yeah still was absolutely certain that it was Harrison so I looked at the pictures and was like actually he does look really great we think that he looks a little bit like a young Mike as well <laughs> um you can imagine how Mike would look like that but and since then his career has gone absolutely ballistic basically he's like just been um, he's just done his first term at Red Roof's Drama School, which is where Kate Winslet went. He's like moved from Liverpool to, um, I think it's, um, uh, can't remember where it is, somewhere in it just outside London so that he can do drama full time. And he was cast in Peaky Blinders with Tom Hardy um, and Killian Murphy for the second se season. Yeah. Uh, he's amazing. He's going to be a star. Does a great job, and I think it turned out um, later they found out his his dad was at Hillsborough. Yes. Was that right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Which is which is another another kind of I, I thing that, that, yeah. that makes you think. I mean, there's not a reason to give him the part, but it makes you think you you know you a, a sign that you've got the right person. I think it's also uh, it, it that's you know sort of is is kind of a, just a by the way, but nevertheless, I think it highlights just how um, Hillsborough impacted on so many people's lives in and around Liverpool. That this 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 boy who you know turns out to be so brilliant, his dad was actually at Hillsborough and he mentioned it as a by the way to yeah. Mike and um, I just think sometimes these things are meant to be. Yeah indeed. Um, we're going to show a little clip of Harrison. I yeah. think it's him um, with football stickers yeah. which is which is another very really nice <laughs> little scene because yeah, yeah we, scene, we, we, we've, we've all been there and it's how you tell you you know he's learning about the clubs which is how we've done it. So we'll, we'll show you a little clip of, um, of Harrison now. What do you want? Mum said to ask you for me pocket money. Did she now? How much you get now? Two quid. How much? No stickers. Got, got, 
Leeds! I'll swap your Arsenal badge. I'll swap your Everton badge. I'll swap your Everton yeah, that was Harrison with his football stickers, uh, which we've, we've all done, we all remember, and getting in trouble for spending far too much of your parents' money on them. I think, I think we've all been to our dads as well and asked for extra pocket money with that <laughs> in nine as well. Um, and I think, you know, going back to the, the, the other point before, the interesting thing about him that he was so quiet, I think that's really critical to the film because you can see in it that his role in that film is very much the reflective ability to be able to see this entire thing unfold and, and yet be a central part of it. And I think you know, there are lots of great actors out there, but it takes someone really special to be able to, to take that reflective role to, to make us as an audience reflect on exactly what's happening and how, it, and how it's going to affect their lives forever. And, and the fact that it, it became part of his life, um, you know, and he mentioned it in passing, yes. but it, because it's just part of his life and it's part of Liverpool, it's part of football. Mm -hmm. And I think that's... Um, something that I admired watching him all the way through the film I, with them. I think for me as well, because, you know, he's, 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 it was, it was very, and I've said, you know, I think it, that whole thing, his role is like a metaphor for Liverpool and as a city, how we behaved. But for me as well, um, I couldn't help but reflect, or I was looking at that, that innocence in the face, and, and, and I couldn't help but reflect and think, boys his age died at Hillsborough. And that's, I find, really, really moving, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it's unbelievable to think about that. I haven't even thought about that. You know, it's it really brings that home. So, so you've got the cast. Um, yeah. You've got uh, you know the, the money to make it, and then yeah, I believe you made it in four days. Yeah. And it was filmed in Liverpool. And I was thinking about this because in some ways it didn't have to be filmed in Liverpool, but then in other ways, it, I guess it kind of had to be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that. Um there was never a moment of doubt that we were going to shoot it in Liverpool for all the reasons we've discussed before. It just would have felt wrong on every level to um, to have filmed it anywhere else, basically, even though most of the actors, apart from Harrison, we had to, you know, we had to transport Lizzie and Neil, I think, to Liverpool. Actually, I think Neil still works there, uh, lives there part-time, but, um, but yeah, both of them had been doing films other, uh, elsewhere <coughs> and... Um, and but it was so it was so central to the story, and not least we wanted to get um, crew and help from people from the area in the region. So our um, line producers, Liverpool-based um, producer Jenny, um, and all of our runners. It, it was really important to us that we had that sort of backup of when you have a crew all working together um, for people to understand the story that you're working on really deep down, like to base it there and to to do it there is is just sort of critical to the mentality of the crew as you're making a film together i think and you filmed it in four days which is um tight yeah and i love the fact that I've, i found out later that it was heavily filmed in mike's mum's house yeah. which is another another nice part because i know that mike will see a lot of himself in, in harrison and you know he was the same age and, and things like that so that feels like a nice touch as well yeah definitely he said right from the start that we were definitely going to be able to shoot in his mum's house i honestly don't know if he actually asked her until <laughs> about yeah. and, and until we were there on a recce I'm until she sure. saw the cameras turn yeah, off i mean really he, he, she made you all lunch as well didn't she? Uh, <laughs> I see, no 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 she, she moved out she moved we, we advised that probably the best thing was for her to go and yeah. move in with his older brother because the mess that you make as a film crew in, in someone's house is just sort of unbelievable to anyone who likes their house spick and span um, and uh, so yeah so she moved out but I don't think Mike actually mentioned as well that we were going to be re wallpapering the, the, the kitchen and repainting the living room uh, and we did a thing where we brought her in to see it at one point we've got that filmed um, of her seeing her house all, all turned into the 1980s for the first time and yeah she was pretty surprised <laughs> She's quite well, that's the, thing, the things we put are uh, our yeah. mother's flu, I guess. Yeah, yeah, um, so thanks a lot, guys. I want to thank you um, all for joining me and to joining me in this chat. And just congratulations again on uh, a thank wonderful you. short film. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.